up and down weather, but now we are heading almost to the castle. It's located very central in the city, so you can walk to it from all the, like, the main streets, the main attraction area. So that's very handy for us. So from Victoria Street, I think it was two, 250 meters. So yeah, very easy to access, which is great. Yeah, cool. it's sold out. Cool. Okay, we've got our tickets for the castle. There's like an automated machine where you put your scan your barcode and put your name in. It was sold out, so make sure you book your tickets in advance. We did it, I think, a week ago, and you can choose the time slot to end server. Yeah, today was completely sold out, so do these online. And if you've got any heritage passage, you get half price. It's so windy. We've got some kind of stadium happening at the side at the moment. The wind's going through and it just sounds like it's about to all fall down. <laughs> Thankfully the castle stayed open today. But yeah, I think last the castle was closed today, I saw. They do have some traditional maps and audio guides that you can buy, but they also have a QR code and you scan it and you get this map of the castle. And we're going to actually head towards the one o'clock done because I read that's one of the main things to see the castle. And we have about 25 minutes till one o'clock. So we'll head that way. I want her to notice what I don't notice. Come and see this view, it's really good. I think that over there is Carlton Hill. Um, it looks like a Greek pantheon, very cool. You want to go and have a walk up there later. You can see how Edinburgh is located now, can't you? In between these lands of the water coming through. Wait for the one o'clock gun. Let's check the time, 5-2. I have no idea what it is. I think it's just like a gun shot. But we'll wait and check it out. A bit of excitement, there's a crowd forming. <laughs> that was very dramatic and now we're getting rained on and then you drop my phone down the side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That was very exciting, the whole crowd was completely silent. <laughs> then as soon as the gun was fired, it went and <laughs> dropped everything. And yeah, the heavens have just opened. Actually, I think it's stopping a little bit. It just seems to be very on and off today. I think we're going to go find some shelter because there's actually like houses up here. It's not just a castle, it's like a village. Um, so I think we're going to go and try and go in some, find some shelter and there's also a higher viewpoint called up in Laird Street. It's a private residence. Thank you Nick. This weather's challenging. <laughs> I was expecting a proper castle because uh, I had done no research on it, but it's not. It's just all these collective buildings up here. I think there's like hospital, there's like a, and there's loads of just signs everywhere. But over there, I've seen dog cemetery. Dog? Yeah, very peculiar. Stones, it's really cute. I love that, it was for soldiers' dogs. It was just like this row of headstones, 
and they're just so small and it's just really sweet. Very moving. This is Mons Meg. It is the largest gun ever to be fired on UK soil. It has a 20 inch wide barrel and look at the cannonballs down there. They are so ridiculous. It was designed to smash castle walls. Um, it's a beast. <laughs> look at it. St Margaret's Chapel. This is the oldest building in Edinburgh Castle, St Margaret's Chapel. So all around the castle wall you have these cannons that are all just facing out into what is now Edinburgh New City. Um, but there would have been a time when that was just looking down onto sort of like maybe settlements or villages and it would have been pretty open there and pretty easy to defend yourself from such a high position here right in the middle and just shooting down on your enemies below. <laughs> See the crown jewels. Let's go ahead and take a peek. Thank you. Hello. We weren't allowed to film the crown jewels, but they were very magnificent and they had the Stone of Destiny, which is used to inaugurate um, British monarchs. So I guess soon that'll be used for Prince Charles. And now we're going to head in towards the War Department, it's where James VI was born, son of Queen Mary of Scots. Oh, we've got portraits of all the past king and queen and all the royal family. Very amazing. I'm actually keen. So where do I start? <laughs> do we start off or we start over here? Humongous fireplaces in these rooms, and I love them. I love big fireplaces. Nearly as tall as me. <laughs> Is it taller than me? Thank you. Um, we just searched the history of our surnames. Well, we searched Jacobson, Corey's surname. And we think it's Danish, and it's actually interesting because the coat of arms for that was for pilgrimage. And we did the Camino, so pilgrimage was uh, special to us. But uh, I think Corey needs to go and like, do some research to make sure it's actually Danish origin. But we did do our major name, which is Eastwood, and it, it's uh, from Yorkshire. Um, it means the woods, and yeah, my family are all from Yorkshire, so that sounds pretty correct. Yeah. Um, the Eastwood surname has really held strong through in Yorkshire. Uh, was it from the woods? Rising from the woods. The motto was rising from the woods. Maybe that's why I like trees. <laughs> We're underground now, and this is where they hid the crown jewels when World War II was breaking out. So the location of the jewels was underneath the toilets that kings and queens used to use. It was very secret. Only four people in the world actually knew. Three people in the UK and one person in Canada. Uh, very high up people. And yeah, so it's hidden here, but thankfully, uh, the UK wasn't the, the, frankly those people weren't captured so the whereabouts of the crown was never known and they remained safe and this was the British monarch's crown so not the Scottish crowns but the British crown so, so it's a very secret operation but yeah that was in this area here. There's a lot to see isn't, isn't there? So much here yeah it's just a town on a hill. <laughs> This castle is actually built on top of an old volcano, so it, that's why it's so high and you have a magnificent view over Edinburgh. But yeah, it's really interesting uh, how my perspective was it was going to be just like this one building, but it's this whole yeah, town and community up here.
prisons of war now? This sounds cool. Old graffiti on the door. They were used as prisons of war for over 50 years, from 1757 to 1815. We're in now what they think the prisoner area would look like. Look at all these hammocks up here. It actually looks kind of cool. <laughs> but you've got to say, you have so much to discover here. I think it's really good value for money. There's just more and more things that you go and visit and you learn about. It's about £21 to enter, but I think even though it's pricey, uh, you get a lot of your money. A ship, isn't it? Yeah, that was one of the highlights. That was really cool. So much to see here. It's just never ending. What else we got to do? There's private residences. So we can't go there, but whoever lives here, how fancy. been here hmm. I've had one. nearly two hours we're heading down to the western face of the castle now I think this is the last section that we haven't explored and there's the National uh, War Museum I believe here so I think that's the main thing to do to see in the western side it's free If you can hear me, well done, because these winds, I think they're up to 50 miles an hour. And yeah, I think we're going to change our um, sunset plans tonight because I think we've been blown off any hill. <laughs> but I think now we're going to head back into town and find somewhere to eat because we've been here a while and we're getting very hungry. Town. 